Greetings everyone and welcome back to Empire Earth 2 with me Kemzit. We're gonna start playing this game today and we are playing it with a, an official mod 1.5 made by Dr. Mona Lisa as it really enables me to play it within a larger display mod because I you know, have a bigger screen and greater graphics card and all that, blah blah blah. And I want to play this old game because it gives me that nostalgic feelings as well. And, we, you know, I want to enjoy it and show you guys that it has a lot of potentials and all that. Uh, I have already tested out the mod and it really works greatly. I would really recommend it to, uh, to you guys to download it if you have a, you know, gaming PC just like mine. And, um, you know, you just gotta figure it out a little bit. There's always a link to the site as well as uh, it will show within game once I start it. Not to forget mentioning, uh, you can just simply easily Google it up as well. It's not that hard as well. Uh, but if you really want me to uh, drop a link, I can always drop you guys a link within my Discord server. If you have joined it or you're feel free to request it within the comments box below. But I would really encourage you guys to feel free and join my Discord server. Uh, but, if I, but, uh, but, but without further ado, we're going to play the tutorials as we have to get familiar with the game. Sure, we're going to skip a few of the basic things which are really um, uh, has common sense and logic within it. And uh, yeah, we're going to see how it will go. But anyway, tutorials, uh, circa 1190 AD, clan and a normal is a difficulty, tutorials description. These tutorials scenarios will walk you through the basics of playing Empire Earth 2. So let's see how that will go. Sometimes between the 12th and 13th century AD, a tribe known as the Aztecs entered the Valley of Mexico, initially despised by natives of the region. The Aztecs roamed the valley and survived any way they could, realizing they must find a permanent home and build a city in order to win acceptance and respect of their neighbors. Tanakh, the Aztec leader, led his people to a swampy island in the middle of the lake Texcoco and found Tenochtitlan in the early 14th centuries. The Aztecs labored hard to transform the land into a productive and prosperous city. From the city, the Aztec people and its culture would spread to, the mo to most of Central America before the arrival of the Spanish in the 16th century. Let's just go ahead and see how this will go. Nonetheless, welcome to Empire Earth 2 Tutorials. The first tutorial will introduce you to the basics mechanics of the game. Your civilization, the Aztecs, is looking for a place to build its first city, Tenochtitlan. In help to them, uh, in helping them to establish these themselves in world and become a thriving and successful people, you will learn how to move around the world and get resources and construct buildings. Let's start by finding a suitable location to found your city center. You can, clo you can close this window by pressing the close button. History, yeah, we have read that. Hints, close the window by clicking the close button if you are ever unsure. Okay, Alt-O, that's okay. Tab will allow you to switch between full screen map. Okay. You can remove units by pressing delete. Okay, right. Yeah, you guys can this also see this. This is the mission objectives panel. This screen displays the locations and details of each objective you are given during the course of a mission. When a new objective appears, a flag will sometimes be placed on the map to indicate the area where the objective can be completed. Information about an objective will always appear first in this dialog box. Left click the close button to continue. Place your mouse cursor over the flag that has just appeared and notice how the text on the right hand side of the screen becomes highlighted. This is the objective that is associated with this flag. If you hold your mouse cursor over the flag long enough, a helpful tooltip will appear that explains the objective in greater detail. Tooltips offer useful information about almost any object found in the game and can be accessed just by hovering your cursor over anything you see. This screen also offers other useful information about your current mission. Located below your objectives is the information button. Click it. Clicking the briefing button will display the introductory mission briefing text. The history button provides historical background relative to the current mission, and the hints button provides clues about the best way to accomplish your objectives if ever you become stuck. You can also pause and unpause the game at any time by pressing shift pause. Now press the close button and press the tab key to exit this screen.
You can also get helpful information about every aspect of Empire Earth 2 by opening up the Empire Earth Encyclopedia. Go ahead and open it now by clicking on the icon in the upper right part of the screen. From here you can gain detailed information about any part of the game just by clicking the related topic on the left side of the screen. Feel free to return to browse through the topics as long as you'd like. When you are ready to continue with this tutorial, close the encyclopedia by clicking the large X at the bottom of the screen. By going into the Empire Earth Encyclopedia, you have also accomplished an objective. At any point during the scenario, if you are unsure what to do next, you can check your current objectives by going back to the Mission Objectives panel. Left-clicking the Objectives button located to the right of the Epic display in the top center of the screen will take you there. The Objectives button looks like a flag and flashes whenever your mission objectives are updated. You can also call up previous text messages or voiceovers by pressing the H key. Check your updated mission objectives now by selecting the icon or pressing Alt-O. Your next objective is to select a citizen, so let's go back to the main screen now. Yes. Press the Tab key to exit this screen. Now, please select one of what your citizens by left-clicking on a unit in the middle Here. of the screen. What can I do? Good. Now look at the information provided in the Unit Information panel located in the bottom center right portion of your screen. The panel will provide valuable information such as hit points, attack rating, range and speed on any currently selected object. It will also display the unit's current loyalty rating, which is its resistance to being converted by enemy priests. The panel to the left of this one is the Unit Action panel. This lists all the abilities available to the selected object including construction options, behaviors, special actions, and special powers. There are also other ways to select units besides left clicking on them individually. You may also hold down the shift key while clicking on different Ready. units to select a group. Other Here. ways of selecting groups include holding Ready. down the left mouse button yes. and dragging diagonally across the group to create a selection box. Releasing the button selects the units in the box. You may also double-click on a certain type of unit to select all units of that type on screen. Experiment with this now. Now, with your citizens selected, right-click near of the course. rocks on the screen. Good! That is the most common method for issuing a movement command in the game. Another method is to use the mini-map, located in the lower left corner of your screen. The mini-map is a top-down view of the entire play area of your current game. Black areas are places about which you have no knowledge, while dim areas are areas you have been but have no current information about. Brightly lit areas are those places within your line of sight. Left-clicking on a position on the mini-map will shift your main view to that location. With your citizens selected, right-click on the mini-map where a signal flare has just been right placed away. to tell them to move there. Signal flares are used to attract your attention to important events. Sometimes it means you are under attack, and other times, like now, it is related to an objective. As your units move out, you can scroll the screen to follow them by pushing the mouse cursor to any edge of the screen or by using the arrow keys. One of the most important aspects of Empire Earth 2 is the cycle of seasons. In snow or rain, your units will move slower and their sight range will be reduced. Although every unit on the map is affected by adverse weather conditions, moving units over long distances and exploring or invading another player's territory is much easier in summer or fall. Your citizens have arrived at an excellent location to build your first city. There are abundant resources nearby and plenty of room to build structures. With one citizen selected, left-click on the Build Civilian Structures icon in the Unit Action panel and select the City Center icon. Now, move the mouse cursor near the trees. Notice how the ghost of the City Center replaces the cursor. If you move the ghost over trees or resources or other objects, the ghost turns red, which means this building cannot be built here. What can I do? One or more icons indicating what the problem with the building placement is will also show up over the building ghost in this case. And the tooltip on the right side of the screen explains the exact reason. If you move the cursor over empty terrain that is mostly flat, it turns green, which means the site is suitable for construction. 
Move the ghost close to the trees and other resources and left click when it is green. Your citizen will begin construction at that location. You may select additional citizens and order them to help with the construction by right clicking on the site. When you have finished construction, select your city center. You can produce new citizens from your city center by left clicking the citizen button in the action panel. Each citizen costs a certain amount of food. You can quickly check on how much food you currently have, as well as your stockpile of other resources, by looking at the icons at the bottom of the screen near the object information panel. From top to bottom, they are population, territories, technology points, food, wood, stone, and gold. There are also two slots for special resources, but in this tutorial we'll just be talking about the basic resources of food, wood, stone, and gold, which are essential in constructing all units and buildings. The other resources will be covered in another tutorial. Produce as many citizens as your food stockpile will allow by clicking rapidly on the citizen icon. This queues up the production order for your convenience. Alternatively, you could order one or more citizens and then hit the cycle production button so that this building will keep producing what you initially ordered as long as there are resources for it. Each citizen that is produced contributes one point toward your current population level. Some units contribute more than one point. When you reach your maximum population capacity, you will be unable to build more units until you expand. You expand by building more city centers and houses. As your citizens are produced, you can order them to collect more food from the nearby forage bush and of gold course. from the nearby gold pile by selecting them and right-clicking on the appropriate resource. What is it? Citizens are the only units that can gather resources. Ready. They will I gather will. as much as they can from that resource pile and carry it back to the nearest city center or warehouse that you own. Alternatively, you can select the Set what Rally Point Ooh. icon in the action panel of your city center and then left click on a nearby resource. Your citizens will now begin to harvest that resource as soon as they are produced. Additionally, you can find and select idle citizens in order to give them tasks by clicking the Idle Citizen button located second from the left under the minimap. As a further shortcut to this, you can assign citizens to resources in a very general way just by clicking on a resource in your resource stockpile display in the lower central portion of your screen. Right click to pick up a citizen from what that resource and left click to assign an idle citizen to it. Now, Ready. gather 100 food, yeah, of 100 stone, 100 wood, and 100 gold. What can I do? Very well. Alright, they have a very detailed tutorial and it's really great. And um, we're starting to get a little bit. We are, have even adjusted our villages to get the stone, wood, and uh, all that. Because we have already got food enough, we've got gold enough, which is really great. All we need to do is focus on these resources, and now we're done. Let's just see how it will fare. Yeah, hold on. Okay, we're doing what they say. Nice. Excellent. Now select your city center again and produce a scout. Here. Right away. Move it. What is it? All right. I'll do my best. Ready. Right away. Order your scout to explore I the area by selecting him and left clicking the I explore button in his action panel. Units on explore will try to reveal as much of the map as they can to the exclusion of any other task. This means they won't respond when attacked, so be careful who you choose to send out exploring. You can also choose to send a unit on a search and destroy mission. This setting also sends a unit to explore the map except it makes the unit immediately engage the first hostile unit it sees until either one is dead. More powerful units than the scout are usually tasked with search and destroy. The last lesson of this tutorial is about how garrisoning can improve your resource collection efforts. Select your city center and then right click on it. 
Note the rally flag is now on the building. This means that any citizen produced here will automatically garrison the building. The garrison display in the building's information panel shows you how many units are currently inside and the maximum number that can be garrisoned. Clicking on this will bring up a panel that shows what units are currently stationed there. Build a citizen now or select one of your other citizens and have it garrison yes, the city well. center by pressing the G key and left clicking the building. The information panel on the city center has now changed to show the new garrison level. As a result of garrisoning, all resources dropped off at this city center will have a percentage bonus applied to them as they enter your stockpile. The greater the garrison level, the greater the bonus. Congratulations on completing the first tutorial. The Aztecs have made their home and claimed their territory. They are well on their way to building a lasting empire that will be known for its wealth, culture, and power. Congratulations on finishing the first Empire Earth 2 tutorial. Yeah, exactly. Now we have done it. The first tutorial has been finished. So we are done. The next tutorial will be the Conquistadors. But for now, this is it. So hope you guys have been in you know, learn from this informative and productive tutorial on how to play this game with a different mechanics than Empire Earth 1. Well, not many was different within this thing as we've learned, apart from the weather currently and that there were different resources present. And I also want to mention uh, that there's also some different buttons added to this game than Empire Earth 1. And of course some different games as well because you know this is a really a great game that has like weather uh, conditions which really implies and it's like really realistic. So um, yeah. But anyway I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did give it a like button and subscribe to my channel if you new and wish to support it. Do you want to recommend something for good game together that's possible as well. Just write it down comments box below or join my discord server so we can have a chit chat about it till then i shall see you guys laters